Welcome back my spuddies, in this video we'll be explaining the cooperative mode, where you will come together to defeat the evil potatoes and their bots. The objective is to fulfill all your orders before the bots take over. Setting up Set up your orders in warehouses similar to competitive mode, except use the co-op deck recipe on page 25. Next, roll a die for your own zone, place a bot warehouse of your color on that node. Then, place a bot ship on that bot warehouse. Every player does this for their own zone. You only have to do this for the chosen player colors. When this is done, roll one die for the bot ships. Place a bot ship on all corresponding nodes. And finally, place a co-op tracker on round one. There are three phases in co-op mode. Place phase, action phase, and infect phase. First, place phase. Every player puts one ship on each of their warehouses and get ready to dispatch them. Second, take turns performing action. Begin with the starting player, draw a card from the deck, face up. If the card says, play this card immediately, you have to play the effect before performing another action. Else, you may choose to play the card or hold on to it. You can then move each of your ships up to two nodes. Repeat until all players have taken their turn. Remember to draw a new card every player's turn. Now comes the infect phase. Infection will progress in this order. First, moving bot ships. Second, placing bot warehouses. And third, placing bot ships. Moving bot ships. All bot ships on the map will move one node towards the nearest player warehouse. Bot ships on player warehouses do not move. Do this for all bot ships on the map. Next, bots will set up a new warehouse. Identify the zones that do not have a bot warehouse. In this case, the purple and orange zone. Roll the purple and orange dice together. Since the orange die throw is larger, the warehouse will be in the orange zone. Reroll the orange dice and place the bot warehouse on the corresponding node number. Lastly, place a new bot ship on each bot warehouse on the map. Once the infect phase ends, the round is over. You may hold on to any one card at the end of the round. Advance the co-op tracker to the next round. Repeat the three phases, place, action and infect until you win. Which sounds easy, right? Well, wait a moment. The evil potatoes will do whatever it takes to destroy you. You lose once the bots dominate the Spudnet when these certain scenarios are met. First, when you have placed all 20 bot ships on the map and one of these cards are drawn. Or, you reach the infect phase but you do not have any bot ships left to place. Next, you have all 6 bot warehouses on the map and when you reach the infect phase, you have no more bot warehouses to place. Thirdly, a player's warehouses are both destroyed by overloading. But that player still has unfulfilled orders on the map. Another scenario is when you have finished round 10, but there are still unfulfilled orders on the map. Or you can also lose when you overload a bot warehouse that has a player order on it. You're almost ready to play the game. But hold up, a wise old Tsutato has some advice for you. Let's go through the additional rules in the co-op mode. Ship collisions and structure rules stay the same as in the competitive mode. Then what's different? Overloading, bot warehouses, bot ships and the movement priority. Overloading. Overloading still occurs when there are four or more ships on the warehouse. However, only that warehouse and the ships on it are removed from the map. Bot warehouses. Bot warehouses can be placed on any node except nodes with player warehouses on. Reroll the dice if it lands on a player's warehouse. Bot warehouses can be overloaded as well. Bot ships. Similar to the competitive mode, bot ships can collide with player ships and overload player warehouses. They do not collide with one another and cannot fulfill orders. However, in the cooperative game mode, we will use all 20 bot ships. And now comes bot ship movement priority. During the infect phase, or when certain cards are played, bot ships will move in the following priority. Let's take a closer look at the order of priority. Top of the list is the honeypot. If there is a honeypot within three nodes from the bot ship, the bot ship will always move towards it, even if there is a warehouse beside it. After all, who doesn't love a sweet treat? Else it will move towards a player warehouse closest to it. This is decided by counting the number of nodes on routes without firewalls. Choose the next closest warehouse if there is a firewall. If the multiple warehouses are within the same distance, the bot ship will move towards the warehouses with more ships on it. 
If the number of ships are the same on the warehouses, move towards the warehouse with more bot ships on it. If it is still a tie, bot ships will move on the path that they can block an order. And if there are no orders, they will choose the path that they can collide with a ship. That's all for that list, but here are some exceptions. If all scenarios are tied, bot ships will prioritize moving within the zone that they are in. Also, bot ships that are already inside a player's warehouse will not move, even if a honeypot is nearby. And lastly, during bot movement, perform all movements before resolving overloading and ship collisions. To sum up, bot ships will simply choose the destructive option, eh? So rally your potato pirates and fend off these pesky bots. Good luck. <laughs>